Um, Owen Saunders, what do you think about the supposed class action lawsuit being discussed for MMTLP? Some big guns like John Berta involved. Also, Ryan Cohen needs to pull his finger out. <laughs> um, class action may happen. Uh, I think it's going to be really time consuming. I think Rose's route's the best current route to go. You you stop them right now in the act of their crime, and uh, uh, and that that's that's probably the best outcome for us because it's not long and protracted. It's not going to be a ten year process until they finally settle or whatever. Um, but you know, if if we if we have to, then we have to, then we file. It's going to cost a lot of money. Discovery in a case like that is really really expensive. Because you'll ask for documents, and they will send you, like, a thousand document boxes, completely unorganized. A lot of it was stuff that you don't even need, that's completely, like, not what you asked for. And you got to pick through it and find what's needed and organize it. And it's gonna discovery alone can cost millions and will take forever. Uh, and that's, that's, you know, the, the, the process that, that you're looking at for a big case like this. Is that they're going to try and just bankrupt you during discovery, and to the point where you're like, I can't, I have no more money, you can't pay our lawyers, and then it just kind of dies there. Um, but if you if you if you if you got some deep pockets, then they're going to go, oh, we're going to have to settle, and um, it'll be up to the uh, uh, the lawyers and the the what's, what's it called the monkey butt? What's it called? Uh, the prime, not the prime. The prime plaintiff? No, that's not the word I'm looking for. The main plaintiff, monkey. The they're the ones that make all the decisions. Uh, chief plaintiff? Chief plaintiff. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, so we're we're it's it could be a real big time and money investment. So they're talking about doing a uh GoFundMe, have every investor donate like 15 bucks or something, which would raise a significant amount of money. I'd raise, you know, about a million bucks. Um, so, you know. <clears throat> Dan Harris, do you feel that the sudden merger info on NextBridge is in some way directly related to finishing off hedge funds and market makers screwing us? Please elaborate. I think it definitely helps. Uh, it adds more oil into the proven reserves, making a purchase much juicier. Uh, didn't cost any money to do it. They just did some share swapping. Um, and there you go. Boom. It, it, it probably ups the price per share of the whole deal. And, um, why not? I, I, I think it's wonderful, but you want to be able to get as much as you can out of that thing. Uh, Dan Harris, what's your base as far as MMTLP settlement is concerned? Mine would be 5k per share. And I think that is a bargain for them to walk away intact. I mean, yeah, 10K, 15, 25, 30. Um, it's going to have to be significant because the, the, the prices that were listed and the bid ask spread were all in the thousands. So if they come in with, with, with something below that as a settlement, pfft, no. Uh, and now that, now that they've done this merger, your share price is worth even more than it was before as a sale to a larger oil company because whatever special dividend would be a result of that will be hundreds. I mean, my mouse of next bridge is forced to cut a deal to eliminate shorts. I hope it's all done at a great price and a tax free event. I mean, I don't think next bridge is necessarily wanting to help out the short hedge funds, but they may be pressured by regulators. Be like, look, man, you can raise a bunch of money. You sell these shares, a few hundred million of them for thousand dollars each. You'll raise more cash than any company has on hand in the entire world. You can set that up for a healthy dividend for every single solitary one of your shareholders, and then you can sell the assets on top of that, and everyone can get like six hundred bucks a share dividend. It is possible. I would rather see two more days of market trading, though. I think the price can be absolutely insane on that, and. I would rather have thousands of dollars a share than only get a few hundred. A few hundred bucks is better than what I started with, that's for sure. But um, thousands of dollars a share would just be mwah. 
<clears throat> uh, Chris Collins. Hey, Houston, do you think we should expect an update from Meta next bridge saying AST complete? And if you haven't got them, chase your broker as the bus is full. I think that's kind of what they've been telling us. They've been like, tell your broker they got to transfer in. And the DTC says, chill. And the broker says, we haven't got anything yet. And the DTC says, talk to your broker. And AST says, talk to the DTC. And it's just this cycle. Um, that uh, Oh, Jason Benson. I'm going to write that one down. Jason Benson. I may have bit off more than I can chew doing this raffle. <laughs> there is a lot of names on it. It's going to be one hell of a spreadsheet. I am going to be uh, doing crafting all night tonight with printouts of... Uh, I'm going to give everybody like an identifier number. That's probably the best way. And then when I pull out a number, it'll, yeah, that's probably how I'm going to do it because it's in this Excel spreadsheet. I'm working it through my head at the time right now. Um, <clears throat> okay. Chris Collins, uh, with two of my three brokers I use, they claim to ha they claim to have all my shares. I'm worried it's smoke and mirrors, showing each person the same shares, hoping no one notices there are enough. I think what they're doing is is that they're just changing the ticker of your shares to something that resembles a next bridge, and then maintaining their temporary QCIP number for them, which is just the fake shares. They're just renaming the fake shares. And, oh yeah, no, you have it, and we all know. That we don't. There is no QCIP number for a, excuse me, no QCIP number for a private company. Um, someone did ask me on, I think it was one of the YouTube comments on one of the videos earlier, they have an IRA. And apparently, if you have an IRA, you can't hold shares in a private company. And they're wondering, how do they fix that? And I have no idea. If anybody has experience with IRAs, uh, in a private company, by all means, speak up. I'd love to hear what solution. I told him to just call whoever manages that account and straight up ask him. Um, cause I honestly never occurred to me if you can or can't have, uh, shares in a private company and something like an IRA that just never, never occurred to me. Iggy Lamone, if the judge turns this back on Thursday or Friday, could trading go into January 2nd or 3rd? I think it'd be very interesting to see exactly how his order is worded. Uh, he would have to give some sort of time frame because they have to be able to serve the order on FINRA, which then the order would go out to all the brokerages. Um, they would say something like, hey, you got to turn trading back on. You got to let the brokerages know they got to close these positions. We'll give you X number of days to uh, make this happen. So, because they can't be like, turn it on tomorrow, because that that's, that's it's going to take a full day for them to get served. And then there's going to be a bureaucratic mess as they try to get the word out. Uh, and brokers will like drag their feet and be like, oh, we already changed the QCIP once. <gasps> but uh, I assume they'll have to make them, they make everything that have the same QCIP in AST and in all the other brokerages they have to agree upon a QCIP, close those things over two days, and then be done. So maybe a full weekend in a day, because it's going to be a holiday weekend. You know, I think the market's closed on Monday, so it's going to be the third would be the day that, that trading could possibly start, maybe the fourth. So somewhere in there. Paul V, if shorts are forced to close, how high could it realistic, realistically go before becoming uh, to damaging the whole system? That depends on how many shares there are. We can we can do the whole uh, calculator thing. Let's let's bring up the calculator. Uh, we got type calculator in here. Calculator. Okay, calculator there. Got to turn off the uh, Chrome. Calculator's on. All right. So it, this comes down to the calculator uh, to how many shares there are. So if there are, as they claim, if you look at the official data of borrowed shorts, there's like six or nine million. Let's just say six million, right? Um, so six million shares is how many they claim that they're short on. You know, it's way more than that. 
because uh, they did like 9 million the last day of trading alone. So they claim 6 million shares. So if there's only 6 million shares to close at $1,000 a share, right? Then that's $6 billion in liability. They can eat that up. They can. They, they Six billion dollars is a drop in the bucket for these large financial institutions. It may wipe out a particular hedge fund that might not have that much cash on hand, but the market can absorb that really well. Now, if it's the estimate, the low end estimate of three hundred million, right, and we're at a thousand dollars a share, that is three hundred billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's pretty much more cash than any individual bank has on hand at any time. So that would be enough to wipe out a bank instantly unless they're getting uh, uh, bailed out by the Federal Reserve instantly as well. If it is as much as $2 billion, which is the upper end estimate, right? At $1,000 a share, we're talking $2 trillion dollars which is essentially everything the banks have in reverse repo right now with the Federal Reserve. It is very possible that if this goes to market, right, if they force two days of trading, we go into our, our accounts and we start listing our shares at thousands or tens of thousands of dollars a share, it could very likely take that sucker into multiple trillions of dollars in liability which would obliterate everything. It would be a market changing event, the likes of which has never happened in the scope of Wall Street ever. Uh, <clears throat> those numbers would be freakish. And I mean, it goes to $25,000 a share. Let's just go, let's go to 300 million number, right? Let's say that, 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 the share sell for people. There are some people who are whales. They have millions of shares. They'll see the price get into the hundreds, and they're like, "You know what? I'm a billionaire. Done." Uh, and there'll be people that don't have those shares. That don't have millions of shares, and they want to see crooked numbers. And they're going to hold out for huge prices, especially if they if they're being forced to close. Let's say it goes twenty five thousand a share. All right, it ends up being the average. That is seven point five trillion dollars. Uh, Dan and Bachelor, five dollars, five dollars in there. There we go. Um, seven point five trillion. There ain't seven point five trillion dollars out there. There's isn't. They have to make it up. You got two and a half trillion from uh reverse repos. You got eight trillion that could be sold off by the Fed and their holdings, security holdings right now. But when they sell that much, they'll get half the value for it. So it's going to flood the market. <laughs> in a market where people don't have the, the capital to buy it up. So you might be able to get the $7.5 trillion from those two sources alone, but it will crash the entire uh, uh, market as a whole. We'll just wipe out 401ks. Companies will go bankrupt. It'll be pretty crazy. Um, but you know what? I'll get $25 million. I'll be, I'll, I'll be okay. Um, yeah, I'll get some cheap houses from, those, from uh, the hedge fund dudes who have to sell. I'll buy their private islands, whatever. Uh, some of you in this chat, some of you in the chat I know are sitting on like hundreds of thousands of shares and man, you guys are going to do so well if this thing goes back to trading for two days. I am envious of the type of zeros you're going to have in your account if that happens. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll have enough. Monkey Butt and I will get our four wheel drive RV and we're going to visit and have lunch with every single one of you. That's going to be our, our post Moas vacation. We're going to travel the globe in our 4 by 4 RV and sit down, have whatever is the most delicious lunch in your town. That's what we're going to have. Lee Meadows, I don't need five pounds for some reason. Not showing up. Came out of my bank. Well, Lee, I'm going to trust you, Lee. I don't think anyone named Lee Meadows sounds like a liar. So I'm going to put you down for five pounds here. I'm going to try my best to draw the pound symbol. There we go. That was actually a pretty good one that time, Houston. I'm pretty proud of that pound symbol I wrote right there. Uh, there were a couple anonymouses that popped up here. I think some folks uh, clicked on the wrong button and had anonymous donations go in there instead. Can't wait to cook you some pick chicken parm. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, all right, where are 
are we? Where are we? We did the calculations. Go back big. <clears throat> no third intro. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 